Today we're going to forage and cook some stinging nettle. All right, and I uh, wanted to show you how, how we harvest it and what we do with it. It is uh, a very nutritious plant. It's an excellent green and you can basically eat it. You can eat it uh, raw, although it's best cooked. And I'll explain why here in a, in a minute. You can also eat the, the seeds and even the uh, the shoots. Best eaten, besides the seeds, in early spring, young plants. And then you, um, how we how we cook them is as a green. Like you, like, you know, saute them. Uh, you can also puree them. You know, you could dry them. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to use nettles. And they're also extensively used medicinally, but what I want to basic focus on is is eating them. Okay, so for foraging for greens, foraging for food, you know, how would we use a stinging nettle? So here we go. I'm going to show you what it looks like and, and what types of environments they grow in and all of that. Okay, so I'll show you them here close up in a minute. But what you can see is this is a this is a kind of a moist area right here. It's a little microclimate in our area it's down by our barn. And it's just this kind of moist area. You can see some sedges in there, and that's kind of an indicator of a moist area. And then we have stinging nettle. And all this that you see there is stinging nettle. Okay, it's just growing all over the place. And so we're going to harvest that. Now, you have to be careful when you harvest it, because there's, there's a reason it's called stinging nettle. And they have these hair-like things on the on the underneath the leaves and on the stalks that um, have like humic acid and histamine in them, and they basically will sting you and leave like welts for hours in, in many cases. So you got to be careful in harvesting them, and I'll show you that. Oh, one thing I want to point out: there's a good example right there. Let's see if it'll show up. So, oh, there we go, right there. Okay, see, this is this kind of like reddish tint. That's pretty common, although it's not really around here so much, but that's common when you find young stinging nettle. You'll see that in different areas. Um, and then now we can, we can harvest these. But what, first thing I wanna say about that is, unless you are sure of the type of plant that you have, don't harvest it. Okay, and that, that's just a general rule of thumb for foraging or wildcrafting. If you're not sure, don't take it and also don't eat it or don't use it for medicine unless you know what it is. Okay, now let's take a look at how we would identify this. Okay, so identifying stinging nettle. First of all, I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like. It looks a lot like a mint leaf. Okay, it's got the, this lancelate type leaves. And then the other thing is, let's see if I can get it to where you can see it. The, the leaf pattern, they're, they're opposite. Okay, so you'll find one right across from, they're not alternate. It doesn't go here, 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 here. They are opposite one another. And they've got those, these hair-like, I don't know if that'll focus in or not, on the stem. Okay, and then also, underneath the leaf itself and maybe you can't see that on here so well but again is you know it kind of looks like a mint plant but it is not and you will find out if you grab a hold of this now there is a way to harvest it without gloves i just prefer it because it's simple and easy and um, this is good and i'm going to show you now uh, i'm going to take you to a couple different spots where we where we have this this one's really great this spot because it's so close to our house and we can get a, an abundant harvest here. And I'll show you a couple more spots. And, I'll, and to include one spot where it's cultivated. All right, so I got plenty. I got this, this whole bag and I didn't even touch this patch, okay? I, mean, I didn't even touch it hardly at all. Um, that stuff's gonna grow in, it's gonna continue to grow in. Again, it gets actually really tall. It'll get three, four feet tall. Throughout the season, we do harvest the seeds as well. But before 
basically before it flowers is when we um, harvest it, harvest it for greens uh, and um, like I said sauteing making puree uh, using it for smoothies making kale ch or not kale making uh, nettle chips okay drying them putting some sea salt on them and doing that and then of course there's a huge swath of, of how this is used medicinally and again I'm really focused on you know foraging for food eating it okay so let's go take a look at some of those other spots here's another site where we have um, wildcrafted stinging nettle and you can see it right here it is starting to come up and let's see if we can get a closer look this is behind where it is in other locations because this is a kind of a shady area um, it is real moist but it is coming up all over the place okay even there's several places over there where it's starting to come up and this becomes a, a big patch that we will harvest stinging nettle okay so this next next uh, spot is in a cultivated garden we're growing it here on purpose and we just transplanted it from one of those other spots that we got and transported or transplanted it here. And you can see it all growing in there. And the reason it's so low and you don't see any larger stalks is because we've already harvested. We already took one, one cutting from this area and have used it. Now it did not particularly like this spot. In fact, um, when we first transplanted, we didn't know if it was gonna make it. It did terribly for the rest of that season and it bolted. It did flower, it did go to seed, drop seed. But now, subsequent seasons, it's doing wonderfully. We've got our own perpetual patch and it's worked out really well. But again, it really likes kind of moist areas. Uh, it doesn't mind shade at all. And so this was kind of a shock area for it, but we do make sure it gets, gets water and all that. All right, now onto the cooking. I'm just letting that little rocket stove get heated up and that'll be going in here in a few minutes and then we'll start cooking all right it's raining so this is why i'm in this little woodshed structure and i'm going to cook up here close to it i'm away from the house and i actually have a fire extinguisher right over there so i'm not too worried about the uh the rocket stove a little rocket stove here what one thing that you can do with with a stingy nettle is you can soak it in cold water and that will help take some of the, I don't know how that works exactly. I don't know if it, it breaks down the humic acid or if it just takes away the sting somehow. But one thing that you can do, so like, like these can be eaten fresh. You just have to be careful how you do it. So for example, I don't, let's see if we can see this. So we take a, a leaf right here and if I just pinch the top, okay, and then I, I pinch it off, right, like that. And I can kind of just fold it up and not even touch the underneath and then eat it. It's good. It's a really good green. It is um, kind of like a uh, like a deep flavor, earthy. I would say uh, more like a spinach or and kale as opposed to some of your lettuces. Um, it's definitely more on the side of the you know your deeper lettuces. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to cook these these stinging nettles that I that I foraged. They soaked in water for a while. I'll drain the water off. I'm going to put them in a little pan, and I'm going to put them on the rocket stove. And I'm just going to saute them like I would spinach, for example. And I'm going to put butter and sea salt in. That's it. Okay, and I'm probably only going to saute them for a, a few minutes, and then we'll try them out and see how they do. All right, and I'm gonna put it on here, and what I probably should have done is melted the butter first, but that's okay. I'm just gonna toss it all, all in together. It's all going in together. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna be careful here if you get that butter on that down there on the bottom. You can see it cooks down much like well, much like spinach. And I'll probably just give it another minute. And it'll be good. And honestly, that's probably good right there. I'm gonna pull it off. I'm gonna add a bunch of sea salt to it. And then let's try it out. And at this stage, you can eat, you can eat all the stems. Like I said, the shoes, the leaves, everything. It's absolutely delicious. It really is. This is an excellent, excellent green. We've got tons of it here. It's like, it's like planting a masculine mix in a raised bed and harvesting, except for you're doing it without having to plant and make potting soil and all that. The other great thing about this is right now, it's April 24th. Right now, I don't, we don't have any, unless we were growing it in a greenhouse or something like that, we wouldn't have a mescaline mix ready to go right now. Okay, I have I have starts that are going, and I have, in fact, right behind us, there are some some uh, cold frames with mescaline mix and kale and things like that, spinach that are starting to come up, but they're not up. But you know what? I've got stinging nettle, and it is absolutely delicious. A little bit of butter, some sea salt, can't go wrong. All right, and finally, as far as stinging nettle, as far as nutritional value, um, every 100 grams has got about 42 calories or so. But what's interesting is it's, it's proportionally really high in protein. So in that 42 calories, you're going to get 2.9 grams of protein. That's, I mean, that's quite a lot for a little amount of food when it comes down to it. It's also very high in things like calcium and potassium and, um, and many other things. And it's one of the reasons why we actually add this to our uh, compost teas or, or when we make, uh, you know, plant fertilizers. Okay, so we make a lot of compost teas. We'll take nettle, take comfrey, put that all in and make fertilizer. So not only does it do all, the, all those other wonderful things, it is a great fertilizer as well and very very tasty of course anything you add butter and sea salt to is going to be tasty but this is a good really good cooked green